On the southern edge of the Snowdonian National Park lies the quaint Welsh harbour village of Aberdovey. It attracts thousands of holidaymakers each year who come to enjoy its four miles of award-winning sandy beaches and mild microclimate. But it's not just milder weather and golden sands that bring visitors. The old fishing port is set on the estuary of the River Dovey, the perfect spot for water sports. One enthusiast is Kirk Fressel, who travels 90 miles from Herefordshire every couple of months to indulge in his passion for windsurfing. Abu Dhabi is a popular summer destination, but because of its prevailing southwest winds, kite and windsurfers come here all year round. The mouth of the Dovey estuary protects its waters from the worst excesses of the weather out in the Irish Sea, making it the ideal playing ground for these water sports. But it's not always guaranteed. If the weather turns and the strong winds combine with an outgoing high tide, the waters of the estuary that covers 11 square kilometers can get churned up and become a maelstrom. But this was far from the mind of Kirk when he saw ideal weather conditions for windsurfing coming up. Like all windsurfers, you tend to study the uh, BBC uh, weather forecast and I, I, you know, I saw that Wednesday the, the wind was going to pick up. Uh, OK, it was going to be rainy, so it would be a, a little bit gusty, but I checked the, uh, the tides, it would be high water at Abbey Dudley, so um, uh, that, that gives you generally flat water in the estuary and you've got the whole estuary to, to play in. And of course you've got the uh, RNI uh, station there as well, which I didn't think I'd need. The rain was slowly stopping and the wind was starting to pick up when Kirk got on his windsurf at 11.30 a.m. He was enjoying the fast-moving currents of six knots and winds of seven miles per hour in the estuary when he caught the attention of Dave Williams, who heads up the local RNLI station. It just so happened I was uh, on day off that day, as a, you know, and I came down to the station to check emails and this sort of thing, and uh, noticed that there was a windsurfer out there, and thought, oh, well, fair enough, he's obviously enjoying himself, good stuff. I left here, actually I was planning on playing golf, but the weather was so bad, I thought, no, no, there's no point in going out and getting wet and losing lots of golf balls. So I decided to come back. I had a look for the windsurfer, just out of interest, as you do, and couldn't spot him anywhere. I thought, oh, I'll keep an eye open for a few minutes and just see what happens. But things turned ugly for Kirk. He'd been in the estuary for 45 minutes when conditions suddenly changed. He was now grappling to keep control of his windsurf. The waves were starting to get bigger and bigger, and uh, at that point, right in the middle of the estuary, he came off the board. The wind had increased to 20 miles per hour and was battling against the high spring tide to create two metre high waves. Kirk made several attempts to lift his windsurf sail, but it had become incredibly heavy after being weighed down with water. He was also struggling against the fast-moving tide and high winds, zapping him of all his energy and leaving him no alternative but to drift on his board. He tried on oh, about five or six uh, occasions and failed every time. Because of the wind and the wave action, couldn't get back on the board. I thought, well, he's not going to get back on the board now, and the next place he's heading for is Ireland. So I thought, well, we'd better do something about it. So I straight away went upstairs into the lifeboat station, set off our pages to call the crew here, and the crew were here in three, four minutes getting changed. The Abu Dhabi lifeboat station is one of 235 RNLI rescue stations across the UK and Ireland. It's been saving lives for nearly 140 years, getting called out on average once a fortnight. Firefighter Robin Goodlad was one of the local volunteers scrambled to save Kirk. First thing we knew, we, obviously the, the pages went off and we're all volunteers in the village. We've got our own little pages and we just drop whatever we're doing or work or anything like that and come down to the station and, and respond. Ten minutes after Kirk first got into trouble, the crew launched their boat. It was 12.35pm and by now Kirk had been pulled even closer to the estuary mouth by the outgoing tide. Conditions there were at force six, which meant four metre swells and winds of up to 30 miles per hour. I managed to get into breaking surf, which was causing him problems. He wasn't able to, to restart then, so we need to get down there pretty quick and get him. 
Kirk had almost reached the Abu Dhabi bar where the estuary meets the sea and silt deposits have raised a section of the seabed. It really does start to jack the waves up. The wind's in the opposite direction, holding those waves up. So whilst I might have been in two metre waves uh, earlier, and I was struggling a little bit, suddenly now I'm in four metre, you know, breaking swell. Uh, I'm thinking, this is not a very good place to be at all. I can't, you know, this is, um, it's like going through a washing machine at that stage. The rough conditions in the estuary were going to make it challenging for the lifeboat rescuers to get to Kirk too. We've got the estuary here, which holds quite a lot of water, but the opening to the estuary is quite small. So every time the, the tide ebbs out, there's a lot of water that has to get through a really small gap, so it speeds up to about six or seven knots. And when you've got the wind going the other direction, about 30 knots, you get quite nasty standing waves, which is not a very nice place. Totally unaware that help was on its way, Kirk was beginning to feel the effects of his struggle. He was immersed in water of just 14 degrees centigrade, well below body temperature, and was in danger of suffering from hypothermia. He was also physically exhausted, which put him at risk from drowning. What's more, he was still heading straight for the Irish Sea. The sail is just getting ripped right out of my hands. So uh, at that stage, I'm thinking, I'll just sit on the board, figure out what my options are, best thing to do here. Coming up later on Living Dangerously, the four six high winds put the RNLI rescuers' own lives at risk as they go to save Kirk, who's getting ever closer to the open sea. It's quite difficult for us to approach him because of the, the breaking sea. If we put the boat side onto a breaking sea, there's a good chance it could capsize. So once we'd spotted him, we had to wave to him to let him know we were turning down sea. And then turning around and taking the wave head on, that's actually the safest way to approach a, a breaking wave. I'm just about to release, uh, the, ditch the sail. I hear uh, an engine note. So when, uh, when I got uh, on the top of the next wave, I had a quick scan around the horizon. I could see a boat. Fantastic. There is a god. And when I come up the next uh, wave, they, uh, they were coming past me and they said, uh, OK, we won't be able to get your rig in. When we come alongside you, make it quick, make it snappy, get on board. And uh, put the hand out, I grabbed it, and they dumped me pretty unceremoniously into the bottom of the boat, for which I was very grateful. Despite Kirk's windsurfing worth over a thousand pounds, he had no qualms about abandoning it to the waves and saving his own skin. When we got there, he was, he was quite cold, but he was OK. I think he was very relieved to see us. Um, and obviously we managed to get him in quite quickly and he was, he was very relieved. I was glad to be in the boat. They, they were very reassuring. It's, you know, you're safe now. There's nothing to worry about. We're just going to take you back to the station. So again, they expertly turned the boat around uh, in those conditions. And we only went maybe four, six hundred yards. And, and suddenly, you know, you're, you're out of the, that position in the estuary mouth. Where, it's, where the waves are being created, jacked up by the bar, and it, you're back into flat water. You think, look at this, I'm just so close to being in you know, ideal conditions, and yet, you know, just 600 yards out to sea, it's much, much rougher. But had it not been for the heavy rain stopping Dave Williams from his game of golf, he wouldn't have even been at the lifeboat station to spot Kirk in such trouble and things could have turned out so differently. It's really difficult to see people because of the troughs of the wave. If you've got a couple of metres of surf and you're below that, it's very difficult to be spotted. So in conditions where there's nobody on the beach, you'd be very lucky if somebody did spot you. And it's just fortunate on this day that there was somebody there who, who spotted him in that position and was able to call it in, really.